Great to start the video. I've only had this chair like a couple of weeks. I mean, obviously I think it was July when I had to get the chair when I fell off, but let's check that video. Hello, and welcome to Fast Forward Review Catch Up video. Now I say catch up because I have no idea what the fucking thing is, really. Um, it's a bit of a rant about Fast Forward Reviews and I know I've ranted about this in the past, but I don't remember. It's on YouTube, check it out. But I'm probably gonna say exactly the same stuff. Um, so basically, Getting ready for some podcasts this week, so again, that chair. I'm gonna to have to sit on the rickety dickety chair, definitely. So, fast forward reviews. Final episode is on its way. Um, this morning, I mass that the director's cut to the final episode has two versions. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, going back to original fast forward reviews. I've always been a massive fan of movies, huge in the movies, and for a long time stayed away from it because. At the time, that was the company's direction. You weren't allowed to have one of the two things. And I don't want to get much into that, but like the new one is amazing and stuff like that. And it's all embraced. So the last couple of years has been massive change, especially with Lonely Tree Entertainment. And for Lonely Tree Entertainment as well, it was great to be away from previous stuff in the past um, when it comes to producers and distribution and all that kinds of stuff. Um, as content, you know, because like you used to not be. I mean, I've seen some footage this morning, and ba uh, Jack's wearing a BAM t shirt, and it's from 2002, 2003. It's the one where I kicked Jack through the fence. So yeah, there's Jack cutting the fence. So obviously that footage this morning. Um, that's the only edit I'm gonna put in there. So that's some of the old footage. Um, and it, the thing is about all that footage, it's 55 minutes of that footage. And um, But that, that's just a reference to like back in the day, you had to be careful what you wore and what was behind you. You know I mean? That's Glenn's artwork, but behind this purple rain, you can see a bit of Godzilla, a big trouble little child gang. Back then, you wouldn't be able to do shit like that. So it was awesome when that bridge of my life was ended to be able to go, fucking hell, I fucking love movies. Do you want to hear about my stories about movies? Yada, 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 yada. Rant, 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 rant. Get mixed up. Get Corey here and Corey Feldman mixed up. That guy from Beetlejuice, well, I meant Edward Scissorhands and like that kind of shit and your angles, you know what I mean? But yeah, um, I got that big into movies. Um, magazines took interest. And um, at the time... Um, I just directed, funny enough, in Evil Hours music video, and um, I got to the point where I was really wanting to put more effort in the movie reviews, and everyone can do a movie review, tap, 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 <laughs> tap, 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 post, rant, 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 you can just talk about that, but it's a passion, it's power, and uh, you know, and again, some, at the end of the day, you either love a movie or hate a movie. That's the simplest review out there. I like it, hate it. And there'll be a million reasons why you don't like it, a million reasons why you love it, but then a million reasons will swap to another person. It's completely different, and it's again. If you love movies and you love the movie industry, that's the core. You don't just go, shit. <laughs> like, I watched Sharknado this morning, and I thought I'd seen it, but I hadn't. So there you go. I had a steel book for fucking about five years. Watched it and I was like, and I just come off the back end of watching Meg again. And I was like, and you look at the CGI and you just think it's ludicrous. But then you look and it's fucking five sequels. So like, it's making money. So I'll just go with it, you know what I mean? I mean, you just look at all the extras just going, the camera's there. I'm not eyeballing the camera. I'm acting. So anyway, magazine started to take interest and um, originally I filmed the first five episodes of Fast Forward Reviews back to back and the original one was shining. But what was different as I had had something published called A Death of a Video Shop, which got changed a few years ago to a YouTube video. So that is on the channel. And that's about the rise and fall of VHS and video shops in general. And what was interesting was the research and like sort of quirkiness and like trying to make it under five minutes and the magazines liked the idea i met with them they had a great ideas i'm still really good friends with barry who owns the magazine and um i was like right i like this idea and 
Again, there's a lot of research. You see a lot of people do videos on YouTube and they put a lot of fucking effort in. The shit you don't even know. I'm a massive Corey Haim fan. And when someone was like, Corey Haim's and Batman and Forever, uh, Batman and Robin, I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> just the power of the internet. <laughs> Easter eggs for years. Just, you know, was Skeletor alive in Masters of the Universe? Apparently so. Like, fucking... <laughs> just that kind of shit. Um, but, you know, a lot of people do research and a lot of people take it seriously. But like from my point of view back then, years ago, um, I liked the idea of writing, again, producing, lights, and it wasn't about me doing it. Because um, originally The Shining was meant to be like a fucking demo. And like, fuck me, I can't even hardly remember the episodes. I mean, you had Ex Machina, I think I don't pronounce that name still. Um, you had stuff like The Bourne 4. And um, they were just flash in the pan reviews. But what opened the doorway about the first episode was Jack liked the idea and so did my ex Annie at the time. And that was interesting to me, directing other people. And I love Jack to bits. He's one of my best friends since I was a kid. He fucking lent WrestleMania 7 off as that old of a friendship and never gives it back. Um, and Jack Golden. Jack is not just Ginger Golden, but like his personality. You just need to look at it. There's a really awesome hidden video on Lonely Train Entertainment and it's called Just Jack Photography, and it's when we went to Sycamore Gap, and that to me is one of the funniest videos I've ever made, because like, this is what I'm talking about with Jack, he's fucking comedy gold, right? But you put a camera and a script in front of him, he's fucking useless, but at the same time, he's hilarious, and I still remember when Jack come over, he's like, I totally want to do it, I totally want to do it, and we talked about stuff like, you know, I would wrote The Departed, but in, it, Departed wasn't meant to be Jack's, um, Jaws of Revenge was wrote as a spoof as I was waiting for Jack and it was meant to be Jack's first one and he filmed the first three and I shit you not like they came out great and again there was a lot of fun there and like especially if you watch the Jaws Revenge one with the whole me where and what I am as the me toy action figure um, but the, the shit it was Jack says look I'm going to sell my house I'm going to move up the road and he's going to live by Sycamore Gap funny enough and I was like, right, um, we're still friends, social media is really good. You know, I mean, my parents live in New Zealand, my mum lives down the road, but my dad and my brothers live in New Zealand, so distance isn't a real big thing. It's massive with, you know, phones and that. Now it's easy. Um, and, like, I've never known someone sell his fucking house so fast. Like, his house sold within weeks. And, like, the second season of Fast Forward Reviews was built on, like, stuff like snakes on a plane. In like the stand, I remember doing the stand now, which was six and a half fucking hours of double denim death in the cornfield. And these were like, I got a boatload of DVDs of Jack, like which I was helping clear in the house out when he was moving. And like, I mean, Jack has reappeared throughout the series and does appear in series four. That's where this run's going. But because of that distance and time, Jack pops up now and again. And that's one of the reasons we started doing the podcast. So when Jack would come over, we would... Me and Jack found it more funny to sit and watching films and talking about films, and that's how the podcast, series, it's just a podcast, was born. But again, if you look now, if you look at it's a podcast cast, it's predominantly Paul Ray and Carl with special guests, Big Dave and Jack. And it's cool because one of the last podcasts we actually recorded was all five of us together. We've had other guests on like Matt Davies, and then we had the Branching Out series as well. So it spawns off there. Um, but yeah, losing Jack was a bit of a uh, kick out, so that means I sort of had to take more of the um episodes because uh, the magazine what 24 um no swearing lock it down to like a like, very brief so the original series only debuted on there they weren't on only Train entertainment and then with annie um it was more like it worked because there was a female doing it um and she had a massive interest in films you know and again it was kind of like the magazine were like like we want this doing but then there was a compromise of going well is it new? Was it old? What is it? And it was always that clash of like, you should be doing the new films because they wanted us to do Dunkirk at one point and I was like, I haven't even seen Dunkirk yet. And I don't want to like, watch a film and be pressured to make a review for it. If I don't like the film, I don't really want to watch the film or I review it. I'll give it time if I think a film like Uncle Peckerhead, I fucking love that movie. And I was instantly on like review right random. See, I'll get to why review of random started, then stopped it a bit. But again, with Annie, um, there is some great episodes, but unfortunately, they're no longer on the channel. Um, she may appear in a cameo in a few, but um, it just me and her ended ended through season two, 
Uh, there was a whole episode filmed and never even got to Eden. So by the end of season three, uh, season two, um, episodes of season three was already filmed, and I think season three was only like five or six episodes, and they were just ludicrous, because like. Edinburgh and like the Newcastle and all the magazines now involved because it got bigger and bigger. Um, it was mental because like as soon as season three came along, it was fucking swearing. There were like some of them were half an hour long. Pray of the Roller Boys was the first one, and I'm a massive Pray of the Roller Boys fan, and just went on a massive range and tangent. Fuck me, I couldn't even tell you what some of the other episodes were. I mean, Bordello of Blood was in there. There was. Tombstone had a review, um, which ultimately had the best boot sale find ever on there. Um, but then it all ended with Cuffs. Cuffs was meant to be the last one ever. And again, all out. And how better to end a fast forward review to have Christian Slater us. I mean, that's it. But there was swearing, they were out of control, they were over the top. But I was just done with that. I was done with it because like it's easy to film one. And then you start the process. And say, for example, you got half an hour of footage and it's jumpy cutty you first got to strip it down with the jump cuts then you've got to make sure it really like flows really well there's alternative takes um, then you've got to piss around with the font um, and then there was the, and the VHS's and the concert bricks on top of the points and then mistakes you're doing it so fast and so crazy it's like, like a fucker fucked that up I've said his name completely wrong and like that was another thing as well like people's names and like going back to Jack with Richard Mercer and like you can't fucking say it and stuff like that it was like it was a lot of fun and they were really interesting writing but I was just running out of steam there was a lot again once I was away from it, it was cool and it was done it was dusted um, I took the format excuse me <coughs> of the jumpy cuddy into baboonery um I'm going to have to charge the camera in a minute, so I'll have to be another jump cut. Hello? Was this meant to be plugged in? Um, I unplugged this for some of the other day. Um, I'm sorry. I, I might have caused a few problems. Hello? Anyway, I got an opportunity to be in this video. I know he's about to talk for like half an hour, so like fucking hell, leave it go. So, while I'm not out looking for werewolves, look at my new toy. Look at this. So when films come out now, I'll be like, hey, look, John Wick's out. Yeah. This is like to make sure no one takes my VHSs out of this room. It peeps like beep beep beep. But um, I'll come back in the outtakes and tell you what possibly could have been a series five if I had my way. I don't, you know. I wanted to do one crazy summer. It's on there, but I wasn't allowed to. Mm. Yeah. Back to dickhead. Jump cut. Sorry. Fucking hell, man. Man, right now, man, I, on a different rant. Like, the camera there was fine. Obviously, I can see all the fucking settings on all that, and then the battery is flashing. That is brilliant. And then, um, my phone's not charging. <laughs> right, okay. <clears throat> so, season three's done, dusted. And along comes um, Review Rant Randoms. And they were great for a while, because you just watch a movie, and go, wah, blah, 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 hee, ha, goodbye. And, you know, you, you vent, and, like, they can, can be creative. Um... Spontaneous is really good as well, but there's no overthinking, there's no, like, as I say, watching paint dry, waiting for stuff to save, edit, edit, cut, cut, cut. It's a stop, start, a couple edits here and there, and you're off and running, you know. And you can get out there, and you can reach a lot of people, and that's what's really cool. I think uh, Once Were Warriors, like, I mean, I absolutely dropped a fucking ball with Once Were Warriors because I filmed that, and um, the amount of, like, fan reaction of that's been mental. It's the, probably the biggest um, review ran random about the bunch. And I was in New Zealand, I could have done the sequel to uh, What Becomes of the Bro Broken Hearted over there and just totally didn't do it by accident. I was like, fuck, that would have been great. But if you look at that, you got good um, Tremors film and the Tremors review round random series 1 to 7 in New Zealand and in England. And again, just getting out there and just getting like, you know what I mean? Um, going out there, right, I love that film, let's talk about the film, there we go, communicate with somebody and all that kinds of stuff. But again, I felt for a while I was just over like the it's like over doing Lonely Tree video after video and obviously there's retro VHS there's all kinds of fucking stuff there's the new wasn't worth buying and I was wanting to bring in new ideas keep it fresh and upbeat um, and obviously work on different productions obviously working on stuff like I Teodora um, was a massive thing for me as well um, and we'll talk about that in a second but yeah I was done with fast forward reviews and I thought you know it was a series it was a little bit hitty missy I probably look back and probably hate some of the editing because again they started to get really rushed it's a shame that i don't remember <laughs> the episodes 
like someone will drop us a message i'll be like i like toys toys is a really popular one <laughs> like i watched that film a few weeks ago and i'm like someone's seriously fucking wrong actually toys has actually been put on the shortlist for a podcast with the guys as well because there's, there's someone seriously wrong about that film um and i think if i think about toys i believe the bear was hooked on to that as well so when lockdown three happened lockdown one i just got back from new zealand and i did the whole it adora thing and i had a great fun you talk about challenging yourself that was just mental and did i make the right choice on that to release it all in one so you can watch it as an ensemble series to straight out bang i think so i don't think there was any point jumping around going every week there's a new episode i i thought it was like to me personally as a drive to make that many episodes in such short a time of that quality and how it all came together. I mean, I'll put my hand up and say it is pretty much a fluke of life. Um, how that come together. Because it was always going to be a hit or miss. Um, and I'm proud of that. How it came out. Um, second lockdown. Um, I mainly had the house to look at. So I didn't really. Um, I was sort of the house out. And was it constantly. I mean, if you see some of the early stuff. Or when this didn't have a wall and stuff like that. It's fucking mental. So I just dibbed, dibbed and dabbed away at bits and bobs. But when lockdown three struck, I think, fuck, everyone's like, what the fuck we're going to do? And that's where season four from Fast Forward Reviews came from. Because um, it snowed like fuck. And I was getting, I'm glad I'm not at work. <laughs> like, that snow. Um, and I watched Ski Patrol. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Like, no script. Well, I wrote down the ideas, the names and stuff like that. Like TJ T. Carter and... I went out in the fucking snow and it was like, this might work, it might not work. It was all about boredom. Like it was better than fuck all. And like, who's heard of Ski Patrol? Well, I fucking have and I fucking love the movie. Um, it's only ever been on VHS. Again, I go into all this. Jack pops up in the episode, you know. Um, the quad post was up on the wall. Um, I fucking love that movie. And I thought, you know what? swearing it can be whatever weird wacky wild you know what i mean the snow was there so i used the snow for it and then obviously on the flip side of that obviously bringing in abraham was a big thing um because obviously i've been producing the abraham series again with stuff for abraham it's more because of the situation we've been in it's like looking past and challenging yourself and just creating this bizarre videos about vacuum cleaners and stuff. I've had great fun and I'm perfectly aware of what I'm doing. I just had a lot of fun doing them. But the interesting thing about bringing Abraham into the series and what fueled the series to become 10 full episodes was the fact that you don't know what the fuck's going to happen and you're watching this as more of a series and then the films drive the series. But then unlike the other episodes where each episode would get weird and wacky but more wild but then some of the episodes would just strip back talk to the camera bang because that's what the um, rep, um sorry the magazine wanted but then you look at the episodes with the turtles and then the, the thing the thing was just mental as well and you look back at them episode and you go like the frog stream as well they're all starting to come back with a good right there's passion there but then there's ones you clearly didn't want to do and um I say I had a lot of fun with Ski Patrol and then obviously using Abraham in the video works. Um, and again, it was more because like there was a mistake with the video and like Abraham just looking out the window going, mm, look at him. I'm like, oh my God, stop that there as a button. It's, it's like, right, that works because if you follow the only train entertainment, you now realize when you watch the Abraham video, the scenes cross over to other videos. And I was like, this to me is interesting. So the first one was really winged because of the snow and there was just no fucking like plan. I didn't go with that film, this film, this film, that film. I see, right. And then the next one, I've had to write them down, was Python. And obviously Car, which is the snake from the Jungle Book, which was in the old room. Obviously it's just in the attic and I was like, right, and, you know, obviously doing the house, just drill a fucking snake to the wall. It's just like, well, that's great. I mean, look at it. I mean, look at that as a shot, boom and you know just went wild and obviously i'd just done the podcast i mean there was a great story about uh python will wheaton is in the video and it's just like right bang another one down had a lot of fun abraham's in that one even brit cameos in that one but if you look at that one brit cameos is the karate kid and karate kid was we talked about maybe doing karate kid so it like foreshadowed what episode six was going to be without even realizing and looking back at that that's really cool because brick comes in with the trying to catch the fly 
and that was a lot of fun. Um, wild, fun, wacky, you know, again, you didn't just fucking drill that low, of course I did. After that was Jack Frost, and that, again, it, it snowed, it not snowed, it snowed again. And like, Britt had no idea there was a fucking full life snowman built in the bathroom. And obviously the bathroom's at the back door, it's downstairs, it's right underneath us. So it wasn't too bad. I remember Hurricane Rain going, you could have picked some white of snow. And I was just like, I was building a six foot snowman in the bathroom with a fucking wing. So you know what I mean? The idea was there, I was just fucking go for it. And I love Jack Frost and Jack Frost got a, he's got like a fun fact and everyone thinks it's going to be Michael Keaton. It's not fucking Michael Keaton. It's not fucking Frosty, mind. And then just again, using Abraham as like this person around the corner to help in that interaction. Um, go digging into the film, you know what I mean? Right, we're doing Jack Frost and you dig into it, you write it, you watch it and you go, I mean, I think it was going around the Christmas tree and like, yeah, it was just fun. And then the aftermath and obviously using a few tracks from Mitch, it's just a lot of fun. I remember I messaged Mitch and I was like, dude, I'm gonna use your track in the film. And he's like, I was not expecting a fucking snowman in the bathroom. And I was like, that's the point. You know what, like, like, it's one thing to like, I'm not going to criticize Watch Mojo because they do some great content, but like, you know what I mean? It's like, that's real. <laughs> you know what I mean? Dish, <laughs> my background. I was watching a video um, with my Watch Mojo the other day about monetizing and they're on about copyright of uh, people, copywriting over people's songs. And I'm like, hang on a minute, you're copying, oh, this is a fucking mess. I thought the video was just completely contemplating itself. It's like, you're doing a video about copyright, about copyright and your copyright. And I was like, I'm a bit confused. But again, people go out there and do some great research. Right, so after that was Trespass and I fucking love Trespass. So here we're going. I'm doing reviews now for films I love, but being creative. And originally um, we were going to use a renovated pub, but because of lockdown, we couldn't. And um, it was a year to the day since I was in New Zealand. I went to the shipwreck and we just got up and I went for it. And I just recently watched Trespass. I've done a podcast of Trespass. I bought the quad poster. And because of the fucking review, I ended up buying the soundtrack and the fucking VHS. Finally, I got it. I wish I knew at the time that the score was on vinyl because I bought the score on CD after the video. I love the score by Ray Cooper. Copper. Uh, it comes on red vinyl. Uh, it's always quite expensive though. But I've got the... Um, the rap version of the album um, and I, I love digging into that and I love like you know I heard back from a lot of people about that how oh, you know it was called Looters you've done your research but it says I, I fucking love that movie since all the way back from New Zealand but the idea of it again it fucking snowed and we went down to the pump house and that day if you look at that and you see the trespass video was filmed also Branch Zero was filmed so it was a big day of filming, but again, there's two different things going on there. So Branch of Zero was just wings, and you know the idea was to go down the pump house. At the time, I didn't realize the pump house had been barricaded up, but it was all about the location, the premise, the trespass era, and just filming in the snow. So it was, again, it's the snow series, to be honest with you. Um, but again, great lot of fun. But again, if you look at Abraham turning up and that, he's running around, running away from werewolves, which is, um, is it? Abraham in the baseball bath episode where Abraham's lost in the woods running away from werewolves and you think that's fucking if you watch every video it'll make sense and like I thrive on that do you know what I mean because I know people who ran me just watch a review and will interact in, interact with me going yeah I fucking love that movie and like I will get yeah I love that movie and that's why but then you got people who go what the fuck's going on here <laughs> but again that's the best thing about running train entertainment when it stops becoming Fun for me, I'm not going to do it. I like to be fun, I like to be creative, and that's sometimes I just need to kick it in the gear and get a bit weird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So after Trespass, I decided to do a tribute to the original series and make it stand it as fuck. Shot it on the top of the stairs and do nothing wacky about it, make sure it was as plain as possible. But that's what I was going for with that one. Um, Doing Oh What A Night, I thought it was great to do a Corey Hayne movie, um, Oh What A Night, something I've had on VHS for years and I never opened the DVD. I seen the DVD go on eBay the other day for £65 unopened. I was like, <laughs> I watched it and if you watch that, I think the beautiful thing about that was the fact that I realised on camera that the movie, the, the woman Corey Hayne is sex pest in, in Oh What A Night plays his mom in Watchers and I was like, and there's only like two, three years between the two films. I was like, 
But it was great to do that because there's a massive fan base of Corey Haim and it's great to bring Corey Haim into the Fast Forward Reviews kind of thing. So I enjoyed doing all one a night. I really did. And again, again, it's passion. It's coming through. It's passion. After that, um, again as well, um, just the whole Abraham writing in his Bible. That was quite a little notebook as well. Thinking of creative ideas and stuff. After that, it was time for Karate Kid. Um, Karate Kid had been on the cards for a while. And I'm glad we waited because at this point the snow had gone. Um, and that was just daft as fuck. Brit was minting it. Um, it's all about the background. Um, obviously, Karate Kid's a big film, but obviously we'd built the fence. We used the fence. Brit's got all the headbands and stuff like that. Obviously, Abraham is in the garden smoking it, um, a joint at the start of it. And it's that whole crossover of like, what the fuck are you doing in the garden? And it was, again, it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, but again, to foreshadow it back to Python, again, filmed in the garden, had a great lot of fun with that. By this point, I was really, really happy. And at this point, I'm looking at the end game because like, now I'm starting to think about it. I would say, again, we had toyed with the idea for a while for Karate Kid, but never really went right. Let's get it wrote down. And again, does Brit want to do it? Um, but again, I was like, I, I always called it a limited series, so I wasn't exactly going right. I'm going to be fucking doing this, and then the you know, keep it fresh. And once I'm bored with it, I'm bored with it. So, I was happy with the quality coming out. Um, again, filming in snow, filming around the house, and uh, the way it was looking, lighting it. We were in lockdown, and there was two days come up with work that I had to go in along with Casper to pull a and load of stuff for internet sales and I says look like can I film a fast forward review and I said look I'll not swear and I was like I want to do high fidelity because I absolutely love that film and they were just like yeah go for it you know what I mean it's like <laughs> they were just like they, I've done plenty enough in the past from the trust is enough to do it and I absolutely love high fidelity it looks amazing and I think like the concept that it's filmed in a record stop about a record shop loving the fact that john cusack i love the cast how casper's in it as well um because casper was just being casper and being annoying but the way casper came into it and even casper like asking for dream machine which again is another Corey Haim reference and casper just being casper but then abraham trying to clean the shop while it's all going on and casper playing the customer i thought it worked absolutely fantastic and again I was at work um, so I didn't want to like I felt like look, I don't want to piss around with this but again it's gonna to have to be on and I couldn't ask for that video to come out any better it, it looks lovely and now that shop's no more so you know what I mean we just took it down um, I'm filming this now waiting for it to go back once the workmen to finish the new shop so that turned out really awesome that one I really really enjoyed that then it started to get a bit weird <laughs> Secret Window is fucking loved or hated, and I like it. I love the director's comedy, even like like the shot going up through the window and Johnny Depp. There's probably a few things I would change about it, but as a review, it made perfect sense. It made perfect sense, and like Brit had no idea about it, and that's what makes Brit sell at the very end perfect. But the whole idea is Abraham knocking on the door, going, "You stole my video," and like me waking up and like fucking covered in shit but then if you if you, again if you watch the video and i'm trying to do it and acting like i'm hung over and just this fucking this book's just being annihilated and, and like abraham's going around getting ready to fight werewolves again it makes no fucking sense to anybody and then to be in the attic which again crosses over to the bible video it crosses over to another video and the whole like Right, how can I be upstairs in the attic and downstairs and still like maintain the like the shots and angles and it's all it's it's very interesting once you start doing that. <laughs> and at the end, for it to be some kind of merge between Stephen and Abraham, for it to be someone like seven or you know what I mean, something really creepy for when like the hat just doesn't look right and the glasses are on and there's like a hybrid between the two and <laughs> it was a lot of fun. And at this point, I didn't know what was next. Because, like, High Fidelity, to me, was a hard one to top. The first couple were just, like, oh, a bit of fun. But the High Fidelity, to me, especially with being filmed in HMV, just, like, that's going to be hard to beat. 
Megan's secret window is twisted and you know what I mean it just shows absolute love for the film it just worked you know so it was like right what do I do for the like the ninth I had to get right I'm going for 10 at this point there's going to be 10 <laughs> I'd watched White Out and I went to myself fuck I really like White Out and I went could have done it in the snow and then <laughs> I remember getting white out on Blu-ray and then I went this could work what if this episode was just Abraham and Stephen takes the back seat <laughs> and I think the line of the series is when do I ever, ever get boasted <laughs> it's just the fact that you know like oh great and like it, I think the idea I think it was meant to be because obviously I did it as Abraham would have his own intro. He would just get loose with it. it. It's not snowing, but he's going to make it look like it snows. He's going to have like the whole jacket on there and the restraint, the line. And of course, by the end of the video, by, by the time it got edited, it was obviously fucking snowing. And it was like, oh, I couldn't have helped any better. And again, that was like, right. They're a lot of fun, but you can see them getting a bit weird and on the crossover, but it needs to end and it needs to end good. Now, at this point, while I've recorded all this, the last episode isn't out yet, but it's now done to me. There's two versions. <laughs> two. The idea originally was to do Pump Up the Volume as its own episode, and the idea of doing it as a podcast um, and broadcast and having the cameos was put out there. Um, Rob Lane was one of the very first people to get involved in it. And I'll admit now, I accidentally sent it to Rob Lane by accident because I, I listed a few people I thought would be cool, cool to be in it. And I don't really like the pest of Rob because Rob does some amazing stuff. Um, because originally I was going to try and track down most of the assembled cast of Lonely Tree and Better in FA. But then Rob was like, I'll totally, this is mint. This idea is mint. Because the idea was I would talk, people would listen over the top, and it would pay total respect to pump up the volume. And once again, use the fact that I lent Christian say to pump up the volume and never got it back. Um, when I started thinking who was in, I got a few in and it just got left dormant for a while. Um, and then I really started chasing people and then reaching out to people saying, do you want to be in this? And obviously got, uh, Mondo was in there and there's a lot of people like hidden in cameos, Afron's in there and stuff like that. And I felt like, right, I like the idea, but then I couldn't really justify pump up the volume. I'd done a review rant random when I got the DVD and it hadn't been that long. I didn't think it was interestingly enough and fresh enough to do it. And I sat around, I was like, hmm, you need to get a 10th episode and obviously I'm doing other stuff at the time. And also I'm looking at there and I was like, fucking tournament. And I said, you know what? After 14 fucking years, I think it's finally time I talked about the tournament. I popped up on For the Love of Movies as a cameo and talked briefly about the tournament and the tournaments popped up in, in a few of my videos. Like, um, There's a couple of videos if you go on the channel, there's a one called Stomp 66 versus the tournament or it's the Red Mist mix and it's an 18 rated video. So unless you go on the channel and click on it, you're not gonna see it. Um, I fucking love that video. And it just sits there with dust on it, even though it's now on the internet. And I'll keep, like, now you can't even walk into a HMV and buy the tournament because it's not part of a call range anymore. It's not on Netflix. It's not on Amazon. You can't get in Poundland anymore. Unless you buy a thing that's not there. And like, for some of that, you know, I was a massive part of, you know, there all the time for it. Not that I had anything to do with the final production. I was there, it's part of me, it's part of me. Like, but it's part of life I've never seen. I was like, and there's always been, you need a little bit of closure on that. You know, I've never went out and go, the tournament, the tournament. And I just thought to myself, you know what? What if? I do this tongue in cheek and I do it as a fast forward review. And I knew as soon as I decided to do that, I says, once I get going and I'm doing it this way, because I, I've got nothing but love for the tournament. But again, there's a part of me going, it's been 14 fucking years, what the fuck's what really going on? Um, I just wanted to do it. And the idea of coming up with, Abraham wants to do pump the volume and boom, Stephen wants to do the tournament and how it crossed over and then using people as a pro it just, it just, it was just meant to be 
and I'm really happy with the episode. Considering now that it's done, dusted, um, the fact that, unlike every other episode that's been done before, the fact when I go, Vin Rams and Vin Rams just appears, and it's the first time I've ever met and seen Vin Rams and he's just like, who are you? <laughs> like, it's perfect. He's a fucking awesome guy. He's fucking, like a fucking brick shit house. But like, it's just that look of like, don't fuck with me. And like, I was like, like, I've got so much passion about these people I've met and known, and like, you know, I was just like, no, this is, I'm gonna go for this, and I went for it, and I always said there'll be two cuts of it, because the reason it was two cuts, I didn't want the episode to be an hour long, like the the extended director's cut, as I've pinned it, is 51 minutes long, and it's basically got like 25 minutes once it's original film, so it'll come out a little bit after, but I sent the finished version to the directors, um, producers and I got one I nearly had tears in my eyes I got one of the nicest messages back of the director and he absolutely fucking loved it and it just meant the absolute world to us after all this time you know it, that was cool you know it was cool and like I've heard back from more people since and like to like Rob again going back to Rob Lane and that he joined the, he was just like mind was blown by it you know it's, there's so much gone into it um, it is completely, I'm talking about it, you haven't seen it, but by this time you probably will have seen it, but the idea of Abraham doing a podcast and people listening to that, and then there's an argument between the door, and then there's so many elements of Easter eggs and references and that, and then that was done, and then the director's cut was done after it, but I've just finished the director's cut, and it's probably been about five weeks, and there's been bits added, um, newer bits, cuffs, Obviously, since the film and it cuffs has actually come out on Blu-ray, um, so it comes full circle. It goes back to the third series where cuffs is the last episode. So cuffs has finally come out. So obviously that's in there. Meeting up with Keith and getting Keith to sign the tournament things there. Um, all the outtakes and extras of all the other people. The pump up the volume extras again. I just had absolute black again. Abraham's in his tent building his tent, which doesn't make any sense if you watch Abraham the tent. You'll realize. They were both filmed on the same day, and no, that was to me. That's it done. As in close the sheet there. Um, I have thought about doing encore bits and bobs. Um, I thought about one crazy summer being an extra, and then one crazy summer's actually getting released on Blu-ray in a month's time. So I say, fucking hell, that's amazing. But as much fun as that, I love doing them. They take so much time and effort. I I don't feel like rushing another series. I'm not saying they'll never not be another series, but I'm saying. That series would be ridiculously hard to top. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So maybe he's go back to review rant randoms because I know Brit loves them. Brit loves it when I just like have now sat down and just went there. Um, and more recently when I went there, it's been about other stuff like um, the band video I've done and stuff like that, and just ranting away about film and bands and stuff. But again, that's it's cool because like it's part of my personality. Um, I love films, but I'm a person as well. Um, but again, with the series. Um, I'm really happy with it because I, going back to the first lockdown when I made that entire show called I Teodora, to then like concentrating and stuff and like keeping a mental balance. I know people probably watch that and we just fucking call them fucking mental. I mean, a lot of people struggle through lockdown and I'm not saying I didn't. I, I, everyone struggles somehow with lots of things and like keeping creative and that's what people do and that's the way I did it. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone enjoys it, as I say. Uh, there's been there's been no schedule <laughs> like it's been weeks and weeks since whiteout come out could even be two months away but yeah as i say there's now it's never perfect i want it to be perfect but i can't even fucking make sure the camera's there uh, charged properly <laughs> so it's a little jump there and a bit of jack from this morning but yeah see the outtakes now who's smiling now who's smiling now who's smiling now who's smiling so, here in the outtakes, I've got not much to say, really. Yeah, I haven't really I've taught myself up. Um, episodes that were thought about um, were Lost Boys 2, um, mainly for the second one. I wanted to do that. I wanted to do one for so Predator, the remake. I wasn't sure. Like I wanted to do, scrap that out. Here. 
Hello, in the outtake, hello, hello, hello. Okay, so, while I get rid of this, you stay there. Actually, John, you can be there, John. Then I can sort of go, hello, you don't know what I'm gonna get next. So, actually, it's balls are shut. Right, okay, stay there, or you'll get the bat. I put the bat down, I might break some it. Anyway, off that rant. Um, Martin and Will and the cube, come away a minute. I go over there. Out the way, I don't want to knock anything over. So, if this was the shelf in the shortlist for season five, right, okay, bad boys, definitely. Bad boys is amazing. So, we could have bad boys, airheads, Rob Lane, definitely airheads. Better roses with Christian Slater, that'd be good. Biodome, Broken Arrow, maybe it's Battle of the Gobots, yes. Dark City. Dogs, if you could look at pink white faces, that could be Mr. Sleep and Mr. Quick and Mr. Hand. Mr. Oh no, Mr. no more Mr. Hand. That'd be good. Dark Man, hello. Uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance, one of the best covers ever. Drop Zone with Wesley Snipes. Yeah, if girls are easy. Frankenstein, I don't like that. No, I'm not doing Frankenstein. High Fidelity, it's already been there. Freddy's Dead with 3D glasses. Hard Rain, that has been a fast forward review, I remember that one. Um, Jack Frost and Jack Frost 2, yeah. The Jackal, Johnny Mnemonic, yes. Jurassic Park, Jury Duty, King Cobra has been mentioned. Last Man Standing, Little Nikita, Money Train, My Own Private Idol. So yeah, that would be, a, um, there would be some ones I loved there from the past. Then you've got the entire Police Academy 1 to 7. One crazy summer. Look, uh, that needs to come out. I've been told it's coming out. But it doesn't have the classic cover. We'll get there soon. Overboard. Look, problem child. But it's a sample. Yes. This could be another video. You can auto sample. Pump up the volume. There we go. That should have been the final episode, but no. No. We had to go for the fucking tournament. Rambo Free, The Relic, the movie you can see. And then we got The Rocketeer. Rocky 1 to 3. Look at them weird walkies, yep. Then we got Ski Patrol. Look, yes, hello. Then we got Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis plays Tom Hardy. Cronuts 2. Suburbia. That would be a fucking amazing trip. Yes, that's a good film. Suburban Commando. Chuck Ramsey's got problems. Hey, Chuck or Chip. It's one of the two. You're a dead man, Ramsey. Then we got all oh, this. Tape heads. Well, that technically appeared in um, High Fidelity. So did Trespass, which is on there. And the last two of the three. Turtle X. Young Guns 2. And Under Siege. Yes. So, yeah. That could be. There's some ones, you know. Uh, but yeah, so this is the end of my outtake. Thanks for watching. And I'll let him talk. Oh shit, the guys. Ice right, Cube, back to where you came from. That's Eddie Murphy. That's Martin Lawrence. There we go. <laughs> Eddie Murphy lives with Beverly Hills Cup over there. Oops, sorry about that. Right, let's go look for some werewolves. Bye now. Hello, so here's the outtake. Somebody in far too way back on my chair. And guess what, here's the outtake. How long have I been talking for? <sighs> yep, my coffee is stone. Coffee is stone cold. Oh, got my coffee. That's how long I've been talking for. Enough time for my coffee to get flat and cold. So, again, if you're new to Lonely Tree Entertainment, hopefully not, hopefully you've seen the series and know what I've talked about most of this. So, again, I give you a reason to travel back through the older ones, you know. Again, I can't really think of all the episodes and I know some of them were deleted because of the X and the O's, um, but there is some corking ones out there, like, um, as I say, again, do I look back and go, right, I remember Bone Tomahawk now and not being very, like, overhyped with Bone Tomahawk and maybe would I change it? Well, not really. It's a review. Do you know what I mean? But again, we're reviews though. As long as you can review something and then watch it again and go, right, I still don't fucking like that. 
or you watch a film years later and at different point in your life and you have different experiences and you can relate to it and it's not as boring and you're like hey that's a really good fucking film why did I hate that so much because I wasn't you know what I mean there's, again there's a million different reasons you can love a film and there's a million other reasons you can hate a film do you know what I mean I know someone who basically like will preach a film based off someone's review and I'm like you haven't even fucking seen the film it's you, can't, you know what I mean it's just like if you're gonna like review something like at least fucking watch it and another thing if I review something I've got it do you know what I mean it's like yeah I think you've got full freedom if you own the movie I mean fair enough if you've got to see it or you, you see my paper when you if I was to go right Batman vs Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I've only ever seen it once right and I'm halfway through it I'm not paying too much attention to it because I'm editing um, if I was going to watch that I'd say right it's Batman vs the Turtles right you might think that's fucking weird but you've got to think as a fan of both how they actually put the universes together you then put in the fact that they've got a mutagen can so fuck knows what the joke was going to like when he fucking sticks that up his bum and transforms into something but you're watching it and there's a bit where at the start and like maybe there's a turtle fan inside you go they don't look like the Ninja Turtles from the 90s they look like the fucking Nickelodeon because they are the Nickelodeon ones um, and you watch Raphael knee somebody in the face and the teeth fly out and then the blood spats up your screen you go yeah this is definitely not for kids <laughs> just sit back and fucking enjoy it like fucking Shredder just fucking full out murdered someone before and you got Batman versus Shredder full on fucking Something like should be in tech and anything. Yeah, it's definitely not made for kids. And I would watch that back and I'd go, right, yeah. But like, if you asked us to remember it from the other guy, like, nah. Like, it, it's going back to someone going, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Da, 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 da. And I'll read the message and I'll be like, what the fuck are you talking about? And it'll, be, and it'll be a video from like five, six years ago and I'll be like, right, okay, you gotta remember that. I do not remember what you're talking about. <laughs> but again, if you again going back to it, if you is real, uh, I'm not saying that, like if you're honest and open about what you're talking about and you've got a passion, um, you'll remember <laughs> because your, your opinion's not going to change. It might mature over time, but like, yeah, that's it. I'm talked out. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to Lonely Train Entertainment for like, I don't know, just for the crack, really. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I've got it. Hello at the very end. Idle fucking hands. I'm gonna track down Devin Sawyer, see if he wants to be in this. See, we've got a hand, we've got the hand. We've got the DVD somewhere. That would be a brilliant one. Imagine that. Abraham, the lazy hand. Then it could chop Stephen's head off, and Stephen gonna be. Oh, the possibilities. See you soon. Now, the end is here.